are still searching for the formula that made them champions two years ago. They set with injuries and plagued by inconsistency. The Giants lost a key divisional game last week in Phoenix, setting up today's test of character, with New York share first place squarely on the line. In their first meeting, the Giants couldn't quite knock Randall Cunningham off his feet. But this afternoon, both teams will try to maintain a foothold in the NFC East race. The Philadelphia Eagles have made the journey up the turnpike, and they will face the Giants live from Giants Stadium for the 108th time in this long and storied series between these two teams. The NFC East looks like this. The Giants at 7-4 tied with the Cardinals who are losing. That game's not over in Houston yet. That's the score, however, with uh, three and a half minutes approximately remaining. Houston leading 38-20. to 20. So it looks like the Giants have a chance to take over first place again all by themselves. I'm Pat Summerall here with John Madden. You look at the Philadelphia Eagles, John, and the name of Randall Cunningham comes immediately to mind. It's hard to believe one guy does so much. Well, that's what I thought. You know, we go and we talk to the giant players and coaches, and, and they all say, we have to contain, we have to stop Randall Cunningham. And you say, well, geez, it's a team game. One guy really can't be that big. But when you look at what Randall Cunningham does for this offense, you can right now, what kind of an effect is that going to have? Well, the first thing you think of when you see a rainy day is you have to be able to run. And you realize that neither one of these teams are good running teams. So then you say, who can handle a wet football the best? And I think that's what it's going to boil down to. I think they're both. George Martin, who is a veteran and probably playing his last year with the Giants, made such a great contribution in this area as well as to the football team. The Giants have won the toss and the Eagles, Luis Zindejas, will kick off. the 24, stopped by Ty Pollard. Bill Sims, the giant quarterback, as has been the case for so many, many years now, facing this front four, Reggie White, Mike Pitts, Jerome Brown, and Clyde Simmons up front. Seth Joyner, Mike Reichenbach, Todd Bell, the linebackers, and in the secondary, Roy Neal Young and Eric Allen, the rookie, the cornerback, Wes Hopkins and Andre Waters, a couple of hitters at safety. You know what happened, Pat? All the power went off here in the stadium. As you look up at the uh, scoreboards, there's no light whatsoever, nor are there any clocks. All the scoreboards are out. The time will be kept on the field by the line judge. Time will be kept on the field. You just heard that announcement from Tom Dewey. The 30-second clock apparently is the only one that's working. But none of the scoreboard clocks nor the yardage markers, nor game time are in operation. The lights are still on. That's lucky. They'd have to stop play if they weren't the pitches back to Joe Moore. Left side for a game of about six. Reichenbach tripped him up with West Hopkins. Here is the offense for the Giants. Sims, the quarterback, Joe Morris, who just carried, and Maurice Carthon, the runners. Emmanuel and Baker, the wide receivers, and Mark Bavaro, the tight end. Up front, it's Roberts, Ard, Oates, Eric Moore, and Doug Riesenberg. A very young offensive line, particularly in three spots. Second and four. The Giants at their own 48. Broadway Morris, close to a first. Jerome Brown made the stop. It should be enough for first down, and it is for the Giants. Yeah, that's a good way to start off when you're fired up, is bring your team out and start running. Start running right at them. Let your offensive linemen, you've just been in the locker room, you have this big fiery talk, you come out, the guys are all fired up, they want to hit someone or something, let them take off and let them have some run blocks. Adams has replaced Morris. Maurice Carthon is split wide to the right this time. You won't see that one. Emmanuel drop. Roy Nell Young 
on the coverage. Let's watch Red Clay. He's in there. Second and ten. Adams and Carthon. Sends and the handoff is to Maurice Carthon. Right at the line of scrimmage by Reichenbach. No gain. It'll bring up the third and ten situation. Here's a fired up guy. Reichenbach. It was his name because he usually just calls guys by numbers. That's when he first met him. He was 55 and then he got to be Rockenbach. Stacy Robinson was the man on the move. Sims gets it out, almost picked off, and is finally by Joyner. And Joyner could go in. Sims knocked him out of bounds at about the two. surgery Friday and he's been put on the injured reserve list so he's out for four weeks. I'll tell you, that's a, that was one of the things that Buddy Ryan taught him, well don't worry about that, it's 60 minutes if we don't start off, we will play good in second quarter and second half. Myers is the deep back. Flags as sure. Now the scoreboards are back in operation. 11.57 left to play in the first quarter. The penalty is going to be against the Giants about a half yard. They're so close. And the rain continues. I think that's one of the things when you see in a big rivalry game because both of these teams are fighting for their playoff lives. And I think you get a big emotional game, a rivalry game, and I think you're going to see things on a rainy day like turnovers down here jumping off the line. Cunningham, no signal as yet as he ran the quarterback sneak, and apparently he didn't get in. Lawrence Taylor trying to excite the crowd and get them involved in it. No game. Cunningham, he only weighs about 200 pounds. He does have that leaping ability and the ability to sliver. Now again, it's not where his head is, it's where the ball is. And that looked awfully close. Because all that ball has to do is touch that goal line at any point. It is awfully close. The end of the ball is almost touching the goal line. Cunningham tries the quarterback sneak again, and this time it's touchdown. The ball across the plane. He got in, but barely. Gary Carson was just up here in the, in the booth before the game, Pat. I said, how's Lawrence Taylor? He said, I'll tell you, he's ready to play. He's in a locker room. He is really fired up today. Down there, he still doesn't think they made it. Very unhappy. Taylor sprints off the field, got off in time. The extra point buys it. De Hoswitz tells it holding is good. And it's 7 0 quickly in favor of the Eagles with 11 16 left to play. And the first quarter, Zendejas is set to kick it off. And finally, they're going to give him something to kick, like a ball. That helps. I'll tell you, that first kickoff that uh, they had really uh, excited this place. Both teams come out here all fired up, and uh, it knocked the scoreboard lights right out. Is the Dayhouse can do it again. Boom! Whap! The whole joint goes down. Gugamos and Haddix back deep for the Giants as Dayhouse sends it deep. Haddix. It bounce in the end zone and finally falls on it. And they'll bring it out to the 20. Let's watch the touchdown during the week so they can run it back and forth. And of course, John Madden would be used to that. Right side, no game. Seth Joyner. Let's watch Lawrence Taylor again on his goal line play. Watch him where he makes a hit. And then he's going to say, he's going to get up. Watch Taylor, he gets up, he runs right to the official. 
You know, I think he was right. That's called in your face. Nevertheless, it's 7 0. Here, Sims back to throw under pressure. But the pass is complete. Caught by Baker. Cincinnati over Dallas in the third quarter. Cleveland beating Pittsburgh, or beat Pittsburgh. That's the final. Buffalo and the Jets in overtime. Tied at six in the rain in Buffalo. Minnesota 12 3. Bears over Tampa Bay and Detroit under their new coach, Wayne Fonts, beating Green Bay. And San Diego, nothing, nothing. Morris hit right at the line of scrimmage. New Orleans leading Denver 7-0. That's possible. And the biggest job today to make this a real football game is the officials keeping the footballs dry. Manuel in motion. Sims draw play Morris with the room. Morris outside the 35 to about the 37. Picked up four. Stopped by Seth Joyner. This is one of the things that the Giants think that they can do successfully, and that's run those... their two safety men. Stacy Robinson, 62 yards from Sims. Stacy's first reception of the year. As you said, Matt, that's one thing about that Buddy Ryan defense. It's the all or none. They came in the blitz. They came on an all-out blitz. If you get the time like Sims did and you can find a guy open, you're going to get big plays. McFadden for the extra point. The ex-eagle with Jeff Hostetler holding. 7-7. A tie at Giants Stadium with 8.57 left to play in the first quarter. Scoring drive, five plays, 80 yards. 62-yard touchdown pass from Phil Simms to Robinson. McFadden set to kick it off. The Eagles have an interesting return team, Pat. They had 12 guys out there. Uh, I just see Michael Haddock just ran off the field. But they were in the old 5-3-2-2. Sean Beals, number 81, is the deep back. Underneath, touchdown. I'll tell you, that was something. Eric Everett was the guy man-to-man -man on him. But the big thing was the protection and picking up that blitz. Along with Reggie White. Riesenberg did a heck of a job at picking up. Chris Carter split wide right. Ron Johnson is to the left. Cunningham gives to Byers. He gets about four. Canard, finally. Uh, bring Keith up Byer, excuse me. I'm just going to say brings up the second and six, excuse me. You know, Keith Byers is the two tight ends for the Eagles this time. This is Haddock's right side for a couple, maybe three. Jim Burt was the first man to hit him. I tell you, Jim Burt was saying yesterday, he says, we're at a crossroads here. He says, we have to put up or shut up. He says, stop looking for big plays and start making them. That's the way a nose tackle talks. You know, like put up or shut up. Get down there, whack them, whack them, get the, spread your six from your four and get in the trenches and go after him, man. He's been replaced by Eric Howard. 
touchdown. Cunningham gets straight ahead to Haddock. He's close to a first down. Gain of four, it's going to be a measure, I would imagine. Reasons on the stop. Randall Cunningham, last time they played the Giants in that Monday night game, threw 41 times. He was 31 for 41. Wide left this time as Cunningham goes back to throw and gets it outside. Not much. Complete to Keith Jackson, his rookie tight end, who's the NFL's leading receiver. Their first round draft choice, and he is everything they expected he would be. You know, and he's driving me crazy. I'm still not sure what they're doing. Second and seven from the 31. Broadway had it juggled it. Finally got control and picked up. Four yards. Stopped by the banks. That's a final. Houston 38. Phoenix 20. And so now the Cardinals are seven and five. Philadelphia can tie them with a victory today, and the Giants can move a game ahead. You know, it'd be interesting if the Eagles win today and the Redskins win tomorrow night, there could be four teams tied for first place in this division. Of course, if the Giants win, then they'll be in first place all by themselves. Third and four from a 34. Cunningham for Jackson. Got a hand on it incomplete. They'll have to punt. Carl Banks to Jackson. That's the kind of matchup they hoped for. I'll tell you, Lawrence Taylor, watch him right here. He was awfully close to Randall Cunningham. Mark, Matt Darwin has blocked him there, but watch him. He looks like his right shoulder is okay today, Taylor it. He's right there, just hitting away right as Cunningham threw it. That's a good pass rush when you can be on him as he throws it. Chelshick to punt for Philadelphia. Hockey back deep, and here is Telchik on the run, kicking, and not bad. He got a high snap and got off a pretty good kick after prancing around for a while. So with 5.37 left to play first quarter, 41-yard punt after all that, and the score tied at 7. And they beat the Redskins. White first, but surges ahead for three. Reggie White played that excellent. You know, the, the thing that a defensive lineman has to do is, is just get up there, and if you see it's a pass to start, then when you redraw, stop the pass run. Let's go, no hunt. Doesn't work. Again, it was Reggie White who cut him down. No gain.
Yeah, that's the thing. In fact, that did uh, that did end it. They were the Giants were going towards a record with uh, no huddle in the first quarter. And uh, then that loss stopped it because now they get to a third down. They want to get the right play, the right substitutes in. They'll substitute their nickel offense. And we'll see Stacy Robinson coming in. And then the Eagles will go with their nickel defense. Third and six at the Eagle 44. Now things settle down just a little bit. Sims will operate from the spread. Robinson and Baker split wide left. Robinson comes in motion. Over the head of Stacy Robinson. And they're too far for a field goal. Phil Sims, on the coverage. Phil Sims is upset because Stacy Robinson had uh, William Frizzell beat. In fact, he had about five yards on him, and all Sims had to do was get that ball out there. But that, I think that that's the type of pass that this rain could be affected because that thing looked like it took off a little on him. Back to punch. Ari Buford for the Giants. Mark Zanecki. Back deep. Good snap this time. Buford's punt is going to go toward the end zone and go in there. So they'll bring it out to the 20, a 44 yard punt by Buford. 2.15 left to play first quarter, 7 7 tie. Cunningham intended. Over the right side for Chris Carter. Covered by Sheldon White. You know, it was interesting, Pat. We, we were watching how the Giants are always going to double on Reggie White. The same thing is happening with Lawrence Taylor. You know, they're not letting Matt Darwin just block him by himself. Watch Taylor here. 56 coming from the outside. See Darwin block him. And then Haddock sits right there and waiting for him. So wherever Taylor goes, they're going to have two blockers. What they've done ever since Buddy Ryan has been there is Cunningham's hand off and nothing doing to Walter Abercrombie. Played so many years with the Steelers. You know, I think that's one of the problems the Giants are having with their defense is, is they're getting big plays against their pass defense and you know, they're, they're having a lot of completions and they're getting a lot of runs. And not, not only that, I don't think the safeties have really been tackling well, but neither one of them had an interception all year. And you need some turnovers from your safeties. They need nine for a first down, and Cunningham rifles in the direction of Ron Johnson incomplete. And they'll have to punt again. Perry Williams with good coverage. I think when they, Cunningham has stayed in the pocket every pass thus far, I think that's one of the things the giant defense would like to have continue all day. I would think that will change, however, because he is even more dangerous when he comes out of there. And at some point, he's going to say, hey, I'm going to have to take this game over. Kelsey gets a good snap and gets off a good punt. But Conkey will field it at the 40 signals. Their catch at the last moment makes it safely. We are about the 41. We're at Giants Stadium, East Rutherford, New Jersey. The Eagles and the Giants tied at seven. Pat Summerall, Johnny One, left in the first quarter. Total offense, you see it's been dominated by the Giants, but the big interception led to the Eagle touchdown. The Giants popped it right back. Sims touchdown pass 7-7 Adams left side hit by Hopkins and taken down by Mike Pitts and Hopkins one of the plans the Giants have today is put George Adams in there because George Adams usually goes in on the passing downs get Adams in there and maybe the Eagles would go to their nickel think it's a pass and then they'd be able to run now, Adams went in there, and the Eagles stayed in regular defense. They didn't make any substitutions. Mowat is now the giant tight end. Lined up on the left side. Sims to throw it. With Demaris Cartman, who gets to midfield. Game five, stopped by Todd Bell, who is now a linebacker. Of course, when he was with the Bears, he was a defensive back. Let's watch Reggie White here, Pat. 
And we'll see. He's a power rusher. Watch. He's not going to tell you anything. Watch. He just goes into region for boom. Gets his helmet in there. Whap. You see, get him going back. Get him off balance. Then make your move. Of course, when you have that much power, you don't need a lot of moves. You weigh 295, and you're that quick. All of those things help, don't they? Third down, Sam Sack. Seth Joyner, who got the pass interception earlier, gets to Sam. This is the guy Buddy Ryan was talking about. San Francisco. And all of those other things take place. It'll be a four-way tie for the league in the NFC East. Rain continues. I think the stadium just sprung a leak back there, Pat. I think the Meadowlands might have sprung a leak. didn't have a chance and the Eagles Jenkins came in Zell Jenkins came in on the left side to knock it down Buford never had a chance watch it here's Cunningham on first down as the Eagles get another turnover as intended for Chris Carter incomplete Sheldon White and Terry Kennard back there with him Taylor this side this time. Stayed in the middle. Cunningham is sacked. Leonard Marshall and Eric Dorsey met at the quarterback. It's been a while. It's been a while for Leonard Marshall. We're going to see him coming from that side. Dorsey coming from the other side. Marshall takes an outside pass rush, and it looked like Cunningham had good coverage. He had to wait for a while, and that allowed Dorsey and Marshall to get there. I think that was part rush and part coverage sack. Cunningham is only one out of five for three yards. Back out of the spread formation, this time and out of the pocket. Pressured by George Martin, and down he goes. Hit by Eric Howard. And Taylor tackled Howard. Some hits out there. We're getting them today. You're getting the blue jerseys hitting the white jerseys. The white jerseys hitting the blue jerseys. And the blue jerseys hitting the blue jerseys. Eric Howard was in a stunt. He's waiting right there. They always want to keep him contained. You know, not let him get outside your rush. Tell Shake to play. He just barely got it away. McConkey signals clear catch at the 20. The Eagles wound up with a fourth and 32 after they blocked the punt and looked like they had another turnover that could have put them atop the scoreboard. Didn't happen. 7-7, the score remains. I'm 121 for the Giants, minus four now for the Eagles. And of course, the reason the uh, score is tied is because that interception that uh, uh, Sims threw to Seth Joyner. Big play by Joyner. I think this rain has really affected the quarterbacks. I mean, it, Sims had thrown an interception. He threw a bad one on third down. Uh, Randall Cunningham with one for five for three yards, 26 yards in sacks. That goes back to what we talked about at the beginning. Here is Lawrence on a delay from Sims and nothing doing Jerome Brown. From the middle of the Eagle defense, brought it down. Sims. Sorry. That was the thing we were talking about that the Giants wanted to do is get that delay stuff. And it's tough on first down because I think the Eagles are playing run on first down anyway. I think they're playing for the run. They're not going to be rushed. To get a delay, the linemen have to be rushing the passer. Sims back. Intended Bavar. Cunningham on first down. You two guys were 56 and 58. Watch Taylor comes right up the middle that time. He was lined up on Remington. 
He was right there, and the next guy right over him is Carl Banks. Lawrence Taylor doesn't just line up on the right defensive side. He lines up the right side, the left side, and sometimes over the middle. Third and 11. This time, Banks is in the middle, and Taylor is coming from that right side. Pass up the middle, complete to Jack Time. Not just against the pass. That's Myers for no gain. Maybe a yard, maybe two. And Martin on the bottom of the pile. It's a funny thing, Randall Cunningham was saying last night that he really hoped that giving you many gaps or lanes to run the ball in. So it makes it third and eight as a giant 45. Tom Dooley says false start. Run the ball in. the two toughest things you have to do because the crowd doesn't let you get that good count on third down. In fact, Cunningham's up under the center now. No more shotgun. Cunningham under pressure and down he goes to George Martin and Lawrence Taylor. Fourth sack today by the defense. Let's watch the rush here. I'll control the rush here. Watch George Anderson, uh, uh, George Martin, the outside guy. That's just a speed rush. Up the field, up the field. Then he gets here, just runs right beyond him, and gets Cunningham. Flag back on Chelsea. As the Eagles go down it, or it finally goes out of bounds at about the six. But Chelsea was knocked down in the penalty marker. 11.53 left third quarter first down, an automatic first down like it used to be, and the punt went out of bounds on the six, then the Eagles just turned down the roughing penalty, or running into the punter penalty, and let the Giants start out from this position on the field. It was running into the punter, and that, as you say, is not an automatic first down. Or it's a penalty. Year. Yeah, last year it would have been the first down. The Eagles would have kept the ball. Giants had it then with Bill Sims, the quarterback. Seven out of bounds. Eric Allen knocked him out. Well, look at what Phil Sims has done. Six for ten, under ten yards. And then in the next area, ten to twenty, three for four. That's where he's had all his passes today. That last one was just one of them. Now he's gone twice to 30 yards, 0 for 2, and he hasn't thrown a pass yet beyond 30 yards. I would expect that to change here shortly. Second and three. Might change right now. If he makes the draw play. Intended for Mark Bavaro, but over his head. They're playing much better than they have all year. Let's watch it here from the ground level, and we'll see if the throw does bother Sim. You know, let's just watch it again and see. We'll control here and just run it back and forth. Now it looks like it comes out of there pretty good, and then it just takes off on him. Third and three. Gibbs. Close to a little bit of breathing room. Morris, 16 carries, 51 yards. A clutch four right there. See three new faces in there from two years ago. Morris. In the middle on defense. Sims to throw it. Gets it outside. Morris is going to get another giant first down. Todd Bell finally tripped him up. But he got enough. Hey, one thing about any Buddy Ryan defense, they all they all pursue well and gang tackle. Just watch as Joe Morris Carthon now behind Bill Sims. Waters was man-to-man -man on Bavaro. That's what Phil Sims is looking for. If they leave Bavaro man-to-man, -man, that's Sims's read, and that's the guy he's going to go to. First 
10 Giants their own 41. This drive began way back at the 6. Batted down by Jerome Brown. Sims looking in the direction of Maurice Carthon. Brown. Stopped by Waters, but they'll move the chains again, a gain of 17. Houston beat Phoenix. Warren Moon, a big day. Cincinnati over Dallas. Dismal in Dallas. Cleveland beat Pittsburgh. Buffalo clinches the AFC East. Minnesota over Indianapolis, Bears over Tampa Bay. First down, Giants at the Eagle 42. Adams is the lone setback. He gets the handoff, and he's the lone back. Stays in to help Sims. A planned semi rollout. Jerome, how do you? Emmanuel and Emmanuel gets the first down. Clutch third down conversion and a gain of 15. Okay, if Jerome Brown couldn't do it that play, Pat, watch as we see Billy up back. He couldn't get any push at all. He goes up, whap, he goes down to one knee. He was lucky Bill Ard's a nice guy. He just sat there and watched him. But look at the lane that that gave Bill Sims to throw the ball. There was no one plugging that throwing lane. Because when, when you keep the ball 12 plays and for almost five minutes, you're wearing down that defense. And we saw Jerome Brown, but some of those other guys on that Eagle defense are starting to get a little tired, too. So you get two pluses with these long drives. Second down and eight at the 25. It began at the six. Sims is coming out of there with some room, and he'll have a first down. that he sees, Pat, as we just start it back, and we'll just let it roll here. Now, if we stop right there, we'll see the lane that he sees. He sees it right here, that if he can get by that, he's going to have a long running area. You see that hole he sees? Look, there's no white jerseys at all, and he knows that he can not only get to the first down, but hopefully get to the sideline before anyone gets him. But that's the thing. The Eagles have been giving up lanes to pass just outside the 10, as Sims fakes to Adam. Gets it out to Bavaro. Bavaro is knocked backwards after he caught the ball at about the 8, perhaps the 9. Young and Todd Bell. Good bird. Remember the end zone. Second down and 9. They can make the first down without the score. against the Giants. 
So he blocked one with a trip, one with a shoulder. McMahon from 10 yards further back still is good. And so the Giants take the lead over the Eagles 17-10. We're in the third quarter. Drive, which was outstanding, the longest of the year for the Giants. They began at the six, and they finally got a touchdown. to the 20. Gugamos on the tackle. Let's watch that touchdown again. Man. Here's, here's Stephen Baker. Now watch the safety goes this way. Now once that happens, then he knows that Sims is going to go right there. Now watch the holy seat. Here comes Baker. Boom. Is this? Right at their own 21 first and 10. I think this is the thing more than yardage. That 294 yards the Giants have, they've kept that Eagle defense out there much too long. The Eagle defense is worn down. And then the other side of it, this Giant defense is very fresh because of that. Second and four. Cunningham fakes the draw play to Haddix. Goes deep to Carter. Can't come up with it. And go to him. But look at these drives that we were talking about. Not the fact that they got touchdowns. I mean, that's always good. You always celebrate over that. But they have two drives of over six minutes. Now, that means the two things. One, that their defense was out there, the Eagle defense. But maybe more important in this game, that your defense is fresh to chase Randall Cunningham. People really don't realize how difficult that is in this league to get two drives in a game of that length. Marshall play all year, I think. Yo, he's been sick. He had the flu. He missed practice the other day. This hasn't been a great year for him, but today he looks like he's playing up a notch higher than he has all year. He asked Bill Parcells about Leonard Marshall yesterday. He said, yeah, he let him. He played enough quarters. Maybe that George Martin speech before the game fired Leonard up. 46-yard punt by Telchik. No return. So with 4.07 left third quarter, Giants are up by a touchdown. Maurice Carthon. Carthon sheds a couple of tacklers and gets into Eagle territory. Mike Pitts finally brought him down. But you're so right, John. That Eagle defense has been out there so long. They start to slide and miss. Well, it's like a fighter. You know, you get to that eighth or ninth round, and, and you get the knockout that looks like an easy knockout, and it wasn't necessarily that punch in the eighth or ninth round, but it what, it's what you did in the first couple. And I think that's what we're seeing here now. We're seeing the effect of the first eight rounds, and the Giants are now starting to reap the benefit. And look at that time of possession. First down, Giants at the Eagle 47. Joiner gets him about a yard behind the line of scrimmage. He might have gotten back. Might have lost him. Reggie White coming up the middle almost got the sim. Reggie White lined up over the center that time. Bill Sims really took a shot there by Reggie White. We'll see Reggie White is right here. And watch the shot that he gives him right here. He just runs right by Oates. Then, then right now, once he gets by him, he spells a quarterback. And look at that shot that he put on Sims. And Sims has gone to the bench. Hey, I think he got hit twice. I think the initial contact when Reggie White hit him, and then the next one when Bill Sims' body hit the turf. And Jeff Hostetler has taken... Bill Sims place Sims 17 out of 28. Two touchdowns, and now it's Hostetler out of the sprint formation. Third down and 10, 47. Hostetler in the direction of Manuel and Bavaro, but incomplete as he went down. Well, that time it was a corner. Everett, Eric Everett came on that one. He was unblocked. Hostetler didn't even see him. 
You know, we started out today where there were seven quarterbacks that started every game, and two of those seven are in this game. And, of course, we see Phil Simms go down here with a real shot from Reggie White. Konechny, back to the Eagles, and more review for the punt for the Giants. and 21 seconds remain in the third quarter. The Giants 17, the Eagles 10. Last year's loss to the Lakers in the final. Lakers, of course, again on top of the Pacific Division and planning on repeating. That's prime time here on CBS. Eagles with Cunningham. Got a man, got a man. Open is Ron Johnson, and he is now on Carl Banks. Cooks has taken his place. Cunningham gets to Haddock. Behind the line momentarily. Haddock shook one tackler. Finally is brought down by reasons after a gain of a yard. Lawrence Taylor made that play. Keith Byers, number 41, came out to try and block him. Watch 41 here. Byers try and block 56 Taylor. Taylor just stuffs Byers here. Knocks him right back into Haddock. Haddock had to slow up and try and bounce out. And there was nothing there. Lined up 15 times on that side. The offensive left, four times in the middle, and nine times over in the right. So he goes where they think they're going to run. Second and nine, and Cunningham is going to take off. Loses the football. He faced Pepper Johnson, and it looks like the Eagles did get it back. Covered by Matt Darwin, I think. Pepper Johnson hit Randall Cunningham and knocked that football back about 12 yards. He really popped that thing out of there. Did he hit him? Or what? he just lost control? Well, it went 12 yards backwards, You're however right. it happened. But well, watch, I think he lost control before. I think so, yeah. He was switching hands, and he just kicked the ball back 12 yards. And you're right, it was Matt Darwin who made the recovery. Third and 17. Jackson will be in the slot right this time. Ball's at the 41. Here's Cunningham out of the pocket. Oh. Intended for Keith Jackson incomplete, and they'll have to punt. Randall Cunningham taking a peek there at Keith Jackson. I think he expected him to keep running. In fact, you can see him talking now and go there. Conkey back at the 10-yard line and tells you to punt it. Conkey's going fair game. Makes it up to 15. Word on Phil Sims is that he has a bruised shoulder, was down as a result of the hit by Reggie White and what resulted from that when he hit the turf and White fell on top of him. In any case, he's going to try to return, we think, but right now it's Jeff Hostetler at quarterback. There's Phil Sims on the sideline a little while ago, Pat. And you can just see that someone, the doctor, touched his side or looked like he was just taking a step and his whole side went uh, bad on him. Hostetler, outside Baker, complete. Bell knocked it down. But that was some shot that Phil Sims took by Reggie White. Reggie White went right by Bart Oates. And then I think after he got there, it was a hit. I think it was more when he hit him and driving him into the turf and falling on him that got Sims. So that's the end of the third quarter with the score of the Giants 17, the Eagles 10. And we now pause for a word from your local station. suited up uh, for his last game at Brown yesterday. They they played over here in New York against Columbia. Second and one, the situation. Joe, of course, John's son. And he's full grown. <laughs> yeah, he uh, packed something. You know, watch this thing again, Pat. It looked like 
he just touches himself with his left hand like he's feeling something in there. Look. And as he touched it, it must be like a rib cartilage or something in there. And this is how it happened. Reggie White, again, running right by Bardo, getting a shot right now on Sims. And it's his right area. I don't think he's hurt yet. And right there, I think, is where whatever happened to him happened. the quarterback now with Joe Morris, the ball carrier, stopped by Byron Evans. And Sims up and around and smiling now, and another giant player down. Joe Morris. And they come out to attend to him. 24-14, the Chargers are five left to play in this contest. Giants by a touchdown. After he was hit by Reggie White, he might be back, and my guess, John, would be that he will be back, if, it, if it's at all possible. I would, I would think maybe if the Eagles score again, but I think when a guy puts his jacket on and has that look that Phil Sims has right now, I don't think that he's thinking about coming back because the Giants have control of this game now. If they can keep it, I wouldn't expect Phil Sims to be back in. Jeff Hostetler, the quarterback. Manual in motion. Hostetler back to draw. Complete to Baker. Baker. With some uh, unusual but very talented moves. I don't know what he did to Andre Waters. But watch, it's off a play fake. Ostetler watches him coming across the field all the way, pumps to him, then hands it out here. Now, I think the Eagles think he's going to go out of bounds. Now watch Andre Waters. He comes up there. He thought he was going to force him outside. Baker just went right inside him up the sideline. That's when you can't think too much of the defense. You just got to whack them wherever they are. That's Morris, who's back in the contest. Stopped by Seth Joyner. Got a yard. Line of scrimmage, the Giant 48 now. Hey, one thing, the Giants can't get satisfied with a seven-point lead because the Eagles, if anything, are very good at coming back late in the game. They've done it, it seems like, week after week throughout this year. I think what the Giants have to try and do is get another score in the board. Hostetler gets up into the pocket. To Favaro, but a flag on the play. Favaro will have enough for a first down after a gain of 11. Let's see what the penalty marker might be. Well, that's either going to be against Bavaro or Waters against Bavaro. Because it was on that play, the official was watching Waters and Bavaro all the way down. So that's against Andre Waters and the Eagles. Bavaro had enough for a first down. We have illegal contact. Number 48 on the defense. The penalty is declined. First down. Waters was just arguing for Wes Hopkins. <laughs> Giants 20th first down. The Eagles only have seven. But in spite of the domination by the Giants, they only lead by a touchdown. First and 10 at the Eagle 42. Baker and Manuel both good wide to the right. Hostetler gives to Joe Barnes. You. Goes in motion quickly. Hostetler back to throw under Richie White. Out of the pocket. Picked off by Terry Holmes. I'm just saying, what I told you, there were four guys here. How could you see him at all? What did you throw that one for? I, I thought I saw it. Oh, yeah, I thought. You see four white jerseys and one blue guy. Like he was in the corral. First and 10 Eagles, their own 37. Giants 17.
Kelly Marker down. Carter tripped up Pinar. The penalty is against the Eagles. I think this is an interception that you have to give to the pass rush. Watch this. They have Cunningham surrounded. He throws when he doesn't want to, throws into double coverage, okay. and there was Jerry Kennard. There is the Klein. First down. As you say, that was the first interception by a safety for the Giants. And you talk about if you're not going to have them and you're going to wait to get one, there's no better day than today in this game. Jeff Hostetler returns as the Giant quarterback. Bill Sims still with his jacket on on the sideline. Injured after being hit by Reggie White. Morris, left side, stopped by Reggie White after a gain of three. I think the Giants, you know, have had that type of year where they've kind of been up and down, and the minute they'd start to think they'd good, they, they weren't, and then when they thought they weren't, they were. And as Bill Parcell said, this is the most important game that we play this year. This is the biggest game we have to. Because if we can win this one, we can be in great shape to get to the playoffs. If we don't, it's going to be an uphill battle. And at seven, this is Maurice Cartburn. Now to about the 19, maybe the 20, the two safety men make safety. Where'd that guy come from? Adams is back there with Hostetler. what that play was that that wasn't a very good looking play that looked like something that happened uh, late Saturday in the street either that or it wasn't a design thing 15. 15. especially to run it on third down Buford back to punt then he'll punt from about his own five yard line maybe the sixth Struggles to the 44. Maurice Carthon. Eagle ball. Now from down in the pocket, chased by Taylor. Strong points. Well, you know, and on that play, he used what defensive linemen use. They call it a, a swim technique and a pass rush. He used that same technique against Pepper Johnson. I have never seen that formation. Maurice Carthon, the fullback, was split out as a wide receiver. And then what you're going to see is Manuel comes in in motion. Second and 15 from the 43. Manuel in motion. Hostetler dumps it out to Morris. Midfield in the Eagle territory, stopped finally by Roynell Young after a gain of eight. That was that same formation again. Maurice Carthon out, split out as a wide receiver. Then they threw to the opposite side that time to Joe Morris. Riesenberg, offensive right tackle for the Giants, getting up very slowly. Three of the teams, Denver, Raiders, all three that were tied for first place will lose today. So that it'll stay just about like it was. Well, that's what Matt Millen of the Raiders said. Remember, he says, we stink, but Denver stinks and Seattle stinks too. And I just hope at the end of the season, we stink less than they stink. Third down and eight. 49, Hostetler goes out the sprint formation this time. Robinson was the man. And also the blitz on Hostetler. Pass incomplete intended for Stacy Robinson. Hostetler just barely got rid of it. That was that rookie Everick, Eric Everett again, and he just came free from Hostetler's left side. 
Buter trying to set up a return, not put on the heavy rush. Oates is the center. Had a good snap. profanity. He said, believe it or not, George Martin used profanity. He said, I've never seen him get so excited, yell and scream so much, and it looks like it has had an effect on this team today. It's had an effect on George Martin? It sure has. A reminder that tonight on CBS, Twiggy might be. Third and 28. Eagle ball at their own 25. 17 apiece. Cunningham with time. For Carter. Incomplete. Harry Williams, step for step. The Eagles will have to kick it. I think the thing that stopped the Eagles that time was George Martin's sack of Randall Cunningham making it fourth and 30 or 40, and there's no one that's going to make a play there. That was a big, big play by George their own 45-yard line. Bart Oates looking around and checking blocking. And the shotgun is Hostetler. Fires quickly to Stacy Robinson. For those of you expecting 60 minutes, welcome to CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League. I'm Pat Summerall along with John Madden here at Giants Stadium where the score is 17-17. And 60 minutes will follow at the conclusion of the game. Hostetler looking deep for Manuel incomplete. Lock stop with 35 seconds left. Bill Sims started, of course, at quarterback for the Giants. One out with a bruised shoulder. The Giants had picked up 70 yards with Hostetler replacing Sims. Cunningham has got the Eagles back into a tie. We have 35 seconds left. The Giants with timeouts left. But they need a couple of first downs to get into field goal range. McBeth. Third and five at midfield. Need a first down here. They're going to have to punt. Took him down. Well, the Giants, go for yeah, it. yeah. I was going to say they haven't sent their punt team out on the, on the sideline, but they have to punt in this situation. With a score tied, fourth down, they have to punt. Clock is running. Maybe they're just going to settle for overtime and let it run out. Now he says timeout. Timeout. I think he's trying to get as much time off and then maybe get to the point where you didn't have to punt. I'm surprised that right after that third down, the Eagles didn't take the timeout. We're headed for overtime. I think Bill Parcells was trying to get the time run off the clock and then just get it all the way up where he didn't have to punt. Then he saw he did, so he took a timeout. But again, I think the Eagles, right when Hostetler went down, should have taken the timeout. Because if nothing else, they can go for a punt block and maybe get one of those Hail Mary plays. Orleans shut out Denver. And I mean shut him out. 42 to nothing. Now you think he tries to go for a first down, tries to get down close enough for a field goal, or is he going to punt it? Here comes the punting team. Yeah, I would think, I mean, he just has to punt it. I think the Eagles ought to just put up 10 men on the line of scrimmage and just go for it. This, you know, 
is the 10th anniversary of the famous fumble here between the Eagles and the Giants. When Joe Pusarczyk was the quarterback and the Eagles, Herman Edwards recovered a fumble. And they won a game they shouldn't have won. Snap promotes. Buford's kick is a good one. They're not even going to touch it. And into the end zone with two seconds remaining. 50-yard punt. And we're looking at uh, some more football. Well, you know, we did a game here just a couple of years ago. I think in the overtime, the team that wins the toss is going to take the ball. Randall Cunningham straightening out the offensive formation. I don't know why. Well, he just wants a safety back behind him I in guess. case he fumbles. But with one second, we're headed for overtime, which will be just like starting a new game. 17-17, and we head for overtime. That's not the way it works out. George Martin out. Let's see who won the toss. That's amazing. That really surprised me, that statistic. First time I saw it. Yeah. Marcells, you saw a minute ago, perhaps, saying... Philadelphia wins the toss, well, and we'll receive. The Eagles won the toss. They'll get it first. This time, wind will not be a factor. Rain has been all day long. Headed into overtime. Pat Summerall, John Madden, and it's 17 apiece. The Eagles and the Giants. McFadden, the ex-Eagle, again will kick off for the Giants. The Eagles get the ball. Beals goes back. Sims. 
Well, you know, that's the first thing. He, you know, if you look at the first play, he had eight plays, which wasn't bad, but the result was an interception. Then after that, it was just three and punt, four and punt, three and punt. And and that's where the game changed. Not that it was Hostetler's fault, but the game just went downhill when Sims went out. Then the opposite side, that's when the Eagles came back. And it's still Jeff Hostetler. Giants from their own 20 in overtime. Joiner after a gain of five. You know, if you think that, that Mark Bavaro has, has been kind of nicked up this year, and but if there's anyone on this giant team who's been an eagle killer, it's been this guy. Sure has. And, you know, maybe if you know, we say that the Eagles, either Cunningham running or Keith Jackson, maybe if the Giants are going to make a play here, it could be Bavaro who has to give it to him. We'll be able to enjoy them. I never want to miss one. Hostetler. To Terry Hogan. Intercepted. That's his second one. Intended for Baker, but Hogue comes up with his second interception off Hostetler. That's a play the Eagle defense is needed. Again, the Eagles take over at their 41 after the interception by Hogue. on him. He gets it to Haddix. Haddix down to the giant 30. Stopped by reason. But a gain of 12. He just barely got rid of it. And Dejas, you saw it just a moment ago, loosening up on the sideline. First down, and Cunningham goes back to throw it. Gets it outside to Byers behind him, and he couldn't hold on. Second and 10. Only four more games to go. This one for both teams, so it's getting more and more difficult to pick up ground. Block running, they only got two seconds now to get it rid of it. They get it off. And whistles start to blow. Maybe time had expired. I'm having more trouble with that microphone. Yeah. Ball start, 73 offense. Take them out of field goal range if they don't pick up something now. Well, against right, the Eagles. right now that would add 17 yards to it, so that'd be a 52-yard field goal right. for Zendejas if they don't pick up anything. Second down and 15. The ball has moved back to the 35. Zendejas career long, by the way, is 50. Right now, as John Madden said, it would be 52 if they don't pick up anything. Sheldon White on the coverage. Well, there was a lot of bumping down there with the defense against the, the uh, offensive guys. Holding 48 defense. Giant 30. Cunningham back. Going to come out of there with it and get him closer. And slides at the 15. First down. Is that a, the, uh, the there equivalent is, of? There is no such thing. I know it. A bad word. But if there was an equivalency of that. A handoff is to Haddix. Down to about the 13, perhaps. And here he comes on third down with his field goal unit. In the event they might get a bad snap or something like that, they could just down it and still have a shot. You know, one thing Randall Cunningham was saying is, was then Dejas, he gives the offense so much more confidence, load the middle, and then come from one side or the other on a block. Zentejas, Zentejas is in. Telchik will be the holder. Little is the snapper. Or maybe it's Alexander. It is Alexander. David Alexander. Who's the center now. From 32 yards away, 31 make it now. You sure you're ready?
the thing is, it's not fourth down. If it were fourth down, he can't advance it. In the last two minutes of the game, or on fourth down, then they can't advance it. It was just a block kick. Marcel pleaded his case. And let's see what happens. Tom Dooley, the referee. George Martin is way back by the tunnel talking we to some officials. the recovered in the backfield and advanced for a touchdown. Ball recovered in the backfield and advanced for a touchdown. And Bill Parcells can't believe it. Side, Sheldon White is the man who blocked it. It was picked up in the backfield. Jerome Brown, no. Clyde Simmons is the man who recovered it. The question is whether it was behind the line of scrimmage. Then you can advance it. That's the rule if it's behind the line of scrimmage when it's recovered. If the ball, momentum of the ball takes it downfield, then it can't be advanced. Now we have to see if the ball is one, if it comes backward, which it does, and then where it's recovered. If it's recovered behind the line of scrimmage, as it was, then it can be advanced. If it went downfield or the momentum of the ball took it upfield, then it can't be advanced. Touchdown Eagles, and they have left the field, so. It's a Philadelphia victory, 23-17 in overtime. A bizarre ending. 